Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another video. And this intersection probably looks familiar if you are a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber, definitely watch this video and please consider subscribing. So we are running 32.2.2 .2 and you can see that it did fail through that intersection. So we have multiple tests running that software. So if you haven't seen any of my intersection test video before, we are testing this one intersection because it will constantly fail for me running the latest software versions going through the right hand lane. Going through the left hand lane, it's no issue. It uses the median and it's able to navigate through the intersection with no problem. Now it did pass there, which was really impressive. So let's take a look at this next test here, running 32.2.2 .2 .2 and watch those blue lines, it starts to bounce back and forth, but it is able to maintain that right lane. So it didn't kind of dive over into left lane like we've seen before, although the autopilot did get a little wanky here a little bit, um, and the blue lines were just bouncing back and forth pretty rapidly. So another test here with 32.2.2, .2 .2, and we are gonna follow a car through the intersection and we have multiple cars in the left-hand lane. You can see that from this truck that's right here and the car mid-intersection decides to dive towards that truck. So you can see here when I slow it down that the steering wheel is diving right towards that truck mid-intersection, so I do have to take over and the test is failed. But never fear, we have version 10 now, so let's test out version 10, we have this new beautiful software, uh, I'm sorry, user, user interface with 32.11. So we're gonna follow this Jeep through the intersection. In the right hand lane, autopilot is engaged and mid intersection, there's no diving, there's no jumping of the blue lines, it just follows straight through. So we have a successful test here. It's able to go right through the intersection with no issues. So version 10 is off to a pretty great start. But almost immediately as version 10 comes out, we get 32.12.2. .2. So of course I have my favorite song playing on car karaoke. Um, I'm just kidding because <laughs> I don't actually know what song this is, but this is a song that my kids want to listen to, so that's what they get. Thanks, karaoke. Back to this intersection. We're not following any car here through, which I've seen before will cause me to dive right over. And you can see, let me slow it down for you here. The blue lines will jump to the left, but then the car is, able, is smart enough to know that it needs to be in that right-hand lane. So before I take over, it moves itself back to the right-hand lane. So I'm gonna go ahead and consider that a pass. So it's definitely a little bit harder not following a car through the right-hand lane because it thinks that it's going to a one-hand lane because of the orientation of this difficult intersection. So here we are going through and it's pretty solid. I mean, we don't get any of that bouncing that we saw in the last test and it just followed the SUV right through the intersection. So no bouncing of those blue lines whatsoever and it is able to pick up that right-hand side, that white line, and it is able to successfully pass the test. So now let's test version 10 again. So we're running 12.2 still, and it's able to go through pretty easily. So there's no veering like we saw previously. Um, there's no kind of guessing where the autopilot's jumping those blue lines to the left and the right. So it's pretty confidently going through this intersection. You can see that blue line getting nice and wide, picking up that um, white line on that right side. So now in the rain, running 12.2, which we, this will be a true test to see if it passes, and it does pass. So we have a pretty steady rain coming down, and it is able to pass this test. So very impressive that the autopilot system is able to navigate through this really difficult intersection and maintain that right lane position, which we have never seen before in any software. So version 10, I'm gonna say, has solved this because I've done this test many times, more than I have taken video of it, 
and it has never failed in any test going through the right-hand lane. So kudos to Tesla and their autopilot team because here is a clip from what software was like just a couple months ago. And the autopilot system going through the right-hand lane would be so unsure and it would not be as confident as it is now where the blue lines are telling the driver that, don't worry, I got this. Now I wanna switch gears here because that intersection has been solved. But I want to jump and do not an, a smart summon, I almost said enhanced summon, but just a regular summon because I got something special in the mail. So Living Tesla has sent me their snap plate. And I need to back up my car, which is great because I have a Tesla so I don't have to actually get in it to get to the front of my vehicle. Now, uh, let me open up the front real quick. Of course, you can do that with your app, which is another great feature of Tesla's. So I really, let's pull out the OEM, the front license plate cover that Tesla gives you. And let's go grab the snap plate that I did receive uh, from the guys over at Living Tesla. So the snap plate is a 3D printed mechanism that was very carefully engineered to easily be installed. And I really like the design and the build quality of this product. Now I wanna say, first off, they're not paying me to say this. Yes, they did send me this, but I really like the design and the build quality of this item. And that's why I wanna share it with you guys. So there is included a set of these special screws. I'm not sure what they're called and this little bag that you get to store all the items in. Now, here is the OEM plate, and what I don't like about this that you get with your Tesla is they expect you to stick it to the front of your car um, or drill holes in that beautiful front of your car, and I just don't wanna do that. That just makes me cry. So rather than stick something to the front of my car, this fits very securely, into the front grill and I don't have, I'm not worried about that grill at all. And just by the simple twist you can see there, it does unlock those louvers in the back and I'm able to slide this right off. So super easy to install, right out of the box. You just slide it right in through these grooves here that you can see and they do move as soon as this uh, cylinder rotates and it is just really, really a well-designed uh, piece of machinery here to hold that front license plate. So if you do live in a state that does require that you have a front license plate, definitely uh, this would be at the top of my list. The fit and finish of this product compared to some of the other things I've seen that attach down here to the vent is just far superior. Now, another thing that I do like, now they do make it easy to install, but they also include a little screw so you can actually kind of lock it down. So somebody can't just walk up and if they know what this device is, take it off of your car pretty easily. So you can't push that uh, little cylinder in to twist the louvers off, which is a nice security feature. But this thing is pretty solid on there and it didn't flex the grill whatsoever. I'm not concerned at all about that thing breaking. So that right there, that flex that you see is just the actual device, and it does feel really strong and very durable. What, here is my favorite thing that I like. I'm not sticking something to the front of the car, and you have a very minimal gap behind the license plate, so it's not actually touching the paint on the car, which is really nice. Now, here's the only downside, and of course, I'll leave a link down below to, to Amazon. The only downside of this product is it's $120. Now, pretty expensive, especially if you got the OEM one that just kind of sticks on the front for $120. I mean, that does seem a little expensive, but if you're like me and you definitely don't want something stuck to the front of your car, uh, this is a great alternative and I would say arguably the best alternative because 
of the fit and finish of it, I mean, once it's installed, it looks like it should be there. It doesn't look like some of the questionable aftermarket products I've seen. Now, if you wanna see all the products that I recommend, including the snap plate, head over to my Amazon shop as this is gonna be added to the collection. If you like this video, make sure YouTube knows by hitting that thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you share this video with a friend. Huge shout out to my all electric tier supporters, Armana Min and Akram Atul. Thank you so much, guys. Thank <laughs> you.